Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. If you watch my videos in the past, you're going to be well aware of the fact that I love electronics in the sub $300 category. <clears throat> I feel like in this category, because you're buying things that are not expensive, you don't have huge expectations. Um, and so you kind of set your expectations for what you're buying and a lot of times you can actually get a lot for your money. A lot more than you expect for your money. If you've watched my more recent videos, um, example the HP laptop I've been doing a bunch of videos on, it has been an excellent value for the money. Same with this uh, Asus laptop that I've reviewed um, in the past. Again, excellent value for the money, um, the features you get, uh, the modern conveniences you get, um, all those things combined to make a great system. Uh, but with that, you have to remember you are buying, you know, a very inexpensive, brand new piece of uh, electronics for a very low price, which means you give up a lot. And typically, you give up a lot in performance. You get lower end CPUs, less memory, less storage, and you know the, that's just you know, is a give and take. You're not spending a lot of money, so you're not getting a whole lot, but you're getting a lot of value for what you are spending. And, it, and I'm a sucker for it. I, I love this price category. Um, I've reviewed lots of laptops um, in this pr uh, price category um, within this last year. A uh, number of Dells, uh, Asus, HP, uh, Lenovo. Um, so a lot of options out there, and I love it. But sometimes you need more horsepower than what you can get out of a brand new sub $300 laptop. So what about buying something that used to be expensive and no longer is? Um, and this is where this laptop comes in. So this is a Lenovo T420. I bought it second hand and I paid about $200. I think it was like $208, $209 for this laptop. When this laptop was new, it was nearly a $1,300 laptop. Um, it was designed to be a hard hitting business system. It was meant for long hours of use, longer hours of, of abuse. And they sold or leased millions of them to corporations around the world. And typically these companies keep them for three to five years. And at the end of their life, some of them are pretty beat up. But a lot of them have been sitting on some executive's desk. Or somebody who didn't take their laptop home has just been in a docking station for the last three or five years. And... You know, they're in excellent condition. In fact, some of them don't even look like they've been used. And in fact, this one had barely any signs of use on it at all. Now, you've seen this in a couple of my other videos. So I'll just go over um, some of its specs and features. It has a Core i5, a uh, second gen Core i5. Uh, I believe it's a dual core with hyper threading so yeah, it has two two cores and four logical processors running about two and a half gigahertz and it is much more powerful than any of the other systems I've purchased and used in the last eight months almost a year um, my, that I've reviewed for this channel. I'm not counting my, my Z-Books. They're much newer, much more powerful with 4th Gen Core i7. But of all the other ones I've purchased in that $200 to $300 range, this is a much more powerful system despite being many years older. Um, it has some amazing features that the newer systems don't have. Um, it has a much 
better keyboard. It has the ability to upgrade the memory, the hard drive. Um, you can swap out the CD-ROM slash DVD-ROM. I believe you can even get Blu-rays for this. Um, you can uh, and swap out that CD-ROM for an additional storage drive, so you can have two storage drives on this. Um, it has a nine-cell huge battery for a long battery life. Um, it's very ruggedly built and can take a beating. As I said, it has a much more powerful processor, and so if you're doing anything like video editing, sound editing, anything like that, you may not be very happy with a newer $200 laptop, where this laptop would suffice you much, much better for those, uh, for those uh, activities, just because you have a more powerful system overall. Now, what are some of the things that you give up with an older system like this. Well, one thing you'll notice if I bring back my ASUS here is just the sheer difference in size between the two. The Lenovo weighs probably six, close to six pounds. The ASUS weighs a pound and a half. Um, even though it has a big nine cell battery, battery doesn't last as long. Uh, it doesn't have some of the current features that you'd get out of a, a more modern computer. It doesn't have USB 3. It doesn't have um, USB-C uh, connectors. Um, it doesn't have as nice of screen as um, some of these other laptops have because it, it's an older system and so it has older technology in that regards. Now as far as the design, I'm talking about this one specifically, but this applies to some of the other workstation laptops. Is they're more brick-like. They're more utilitarian. They're not anything fancy. They're not meant to be shown off. They're a work device. And so nobody's going to look at it and go, ooh, that's a nice computer. They're going to look at it and be like, mm, that's kind of an old, chunky, chunky, clunky thing. But that might not necessarily be a bad thing. It's probably less likely to get stolen than a brand new MacBook. Some other things about this computer is the touchpad on it isn't all that great. Um, it's kind of small. Newer touchpads are, are much bigger on newer laptops. Uh, it, they work better for um, mo bigger and wider screens and, and, and more modern uh, user interfaces or UIs. And I'm just going through here. I wrote some notes down. Now, on my other systems, I've, I've shown gaming. They're not gaming laptops. This isn't a gaming laptop. And even though this is a much older laptop, again, you get a lot more horsepower with this system. So you get a lot better gaming performance. You get a lot faster um, video encoding, sound encoding. Um, and a lot of times you can get that at less money than what you would spend on another system. Uh, a more modern system. Well, basically, it's like buying a car. If you buy a brand new car off the lot, yeah, you might be getting um, newer features. Uh, but you may be able to, if you, if you looked uh, at a used car, get something more powerful, you get something that holds more, you can get something that um, maybe is a little bit nicer that you wouldn't have been able to afford new, but you buy it a couple years old and suddenly it's in your price range because it's a depreciated in price. Same thing goes for these systems. These, and I'm specifically talking about workstation business class laptops. Consumer laptops are not really meant for more than one user. Basically by the time a user is done with it, it's not worth much. There's some rare exceptions, but for the most part that's the case. I'm talking about specifically these kind of workstation work class, enterprise class systems, they're meant to last longer, they're meant to be used longer, they're meant to handle a longer life. And so when they're three, four, five years old, there's still another three, four, five years left in them for the price of a brand new computer that's a quarter as powerful. 
and it, it shows. I'm going to be doing a, a, another video here um, that will probably come out about a week after this one. I'm going to show some encoding a video and you'll just see how much faster this system is compared to a brand new system that costs basically the same amount of money. It's a huge difference. Um, and so the people that come on and, and are asking me how do th how does this computer how's that computer perform when I'm doing audio I'm doing video encoding I'm you know I'm, I'm doing all these work tasks no I'm not just browsing the web I'm not just playing games I'm actually doing work on it I every time will point you to a workstation computer you'll have a much better experience with that it may not be as portable but is that portability as important as being able to get that work done in a timely manner. It comes down to personal preference, but for me, this is a much better work computer than this. Now, I own both of these. I use both of these. I use this one all the time. When I'm out and about and I'm writing scripts or I'm writing down ideas for new videos and things like that, or if I just need to have access to my email, Man, I take this. It has a, a nine hour battery life and it weighs a pound and a half and its power brick weighs almost nothing. This is perfect for it. But I'm not going to encode video on this. It'll take 10 years to encode a five minute video. Or on this, it'll take five minutes to encode that five minute video. I mean, just, just a world of difference in performance. And so, if you're going to come to me and ask what computer I should buy, which I get that question a lot. It depends. It depends on your personal preference. Huge. What you want in a system, that's what you should go for. But you also need to look at what are you going to do with it. I get a lot of people that, you know, I'll review a video and I'll recommend it because I think it's a great system, but I don't, and I, I kind of give people an idea of what I think it's good for, but people just see it and they're like, oh, that looks like a cool computer, and they don't give me a use case. What are you doing with it? What, you know, what, what's your end goal? Are you going to be just browsing web? Are you going to try to play games on it? Are you going to play ma modern AAA title games on it? Well, you got to set the right expectations and buy what you need. And you can't cheap out. Um, unless you go used and then you can get a lot more power for a lot less money and cheap out a little bit and get something I shouldn't say cheap out but you can your money will go further with it maybe an older system you know you got to shop it right and, and, and make sure you're not overspending but definitely definitely look at a used system it's worth your time to go out do some research this particular computer I've had ThinkPads before up until up through um, the 30 series, so the W530, the T430, uh, 530, 530 um, that particular class of laptop, amazing systems. Once they hit the 40 series, of the, the 540, Lenovo really went downhill. They were pushing their workstation um, to a more consumer grade product, which, you know, we won't go further into that, but these older systems, the, the, they're an excellent, excellent system. HP had a great product line as well. I just happen to have a lot of accessories for the Lenovo's because I've had them for years. I have docking stations and power cords and everything you can think of. And so it was better for me to go with the Lenovo. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'll put a link to these under the video. I appreciate your time for watching, and I hope you have a great day.